Good afternoon. My name is Sandia Boarja. I'm a dedicated educator committed to inspiring others to follow their dream with great passion. I'm honored to be with you here today and would like to share with you my journey of how my uh, journey began to discover my passion. After I graduated from high school, I was at a loss. I didn't know what to study in university. So I nonchalantly threw around the idea of studying elementary education to my family. They gave me puzzled looks. They said, do you really want to work with children day after day, year after year after year? So I decided to study economics instead, which I did so successfully. As I went from interview to interview at banks, I soon realized each time they posed the question, what do you envision yourself doing after five years? I wanted to blurt out, not be working in a bank! So needless to say, I went back to university to study elementary education, exactly what I first set out to do. Everything started to click. It all made sense. I earned my bachelor's degree in elementary education, my master's degree in general education, and my Oklahoma State teaching license with an endorsement in early childhood. I truly believe that it is pertinent that professionals obtain the proper knowledge, science, theory, and structure guidance throughout their higher educational journey in order to be successful in their careers. The proper degrees and credentials form a solid base in which all of the years of experience, each individual special talents and touches can build upon. Throughout my elementary and secondary school days, I had a few amazing teachers. They inspired me and they encouraged me to dream. However, there was one dear woman who truly stood out above all the rest. Her name was Mrs. Bernice Johnson. She was my third grade teacher. I'm sure each of you had a special teacher who inspired you along your, your journey through school. I invite you to think of that special person. Who inspired you? Who brought out the best in you? Who encouraged you to dream? I'm sure if we were given the opportunity to share those key characteristics, we'd soon find out that they all were quite similar. They would all be inspirational, motivational. They would all be positive. They would all be good listeners. They would all lead by example, be warm and nurturing. But like I said, when I went back to university to study education, my life changed. When I started going to interviews at schools and I was asked the same typical interview question, what do you envision yourself doing after five years? I immediately replied, I want to be like Mrs. Johnson, which set the tone for the remainder of the interview. It led me to talk about her passion, commitment, her genuine sincerity. I strongly believe that we are all lifelong learners and that every opportunity we are given, whether it be good or it be bad, is a learning experience and that we should take something away from it and grow. Looking back at a typical 19th century classroom, you can see that the children are actively engaged. It's obvious that the teacher did an amazing job creating a warm and welcoming environment that was conducive, conducive for learning to take place. The children were happy and wanting to share what they knew. Nowadays, the typical 21st century classroom has the potential to have a totally different look. Not all educational institutions have, have embraced this uh, concept. 
However, we are learning that more and more authentic learning experiences leave lasting impressions on children and adults for that matter. An interdisciplinary approach to learning allows the educator to combine subject areas so that the young scholars can take what they learn in one area and apply it to different areas of their life so it all starts to make sense to them. Rest time in the 19th century had a different look to it too. After concentrated study time, the children would lay their heads down after a while where they could rejuvenate and prepare for the upcoming learning experiences. Nowadays, people spend rest time connecting to the virtual world. They're texting, surfing the net, listening to music, uploading photos, chatting, video conferencing, etc. With technological advances comes responsibility. In order to avoid information overload, people need to learn how to search, sift through, and use the information that they have efficiently and effectively. Technology should be used as a tool to enhance learning. As with any profession, there's a plethora of jargon, abbreviations, acronyms, not to mention all of the theory, research, and data. I've listed a few from the field of education. It's amazing how professionals take all of those things from their field, analyze it, interpret it, and then use it to enhance the future outcome. Although things have changed, some things remain the same. Previously, when we would think about the three R's, we would immediately think of reading, writing, and arithmetic. We still do. However, we've added three new R's to this equation. Reuse, reduce, and recycle. We have to do our part in instilling the sense of responsibility in our young generation so that we can all pitch in to do our part and reap the benefits of taking care of our planet. Life offers a montage of learning experiences to each individual. Every single person approaches the encounters, the projects, the adventures in their own way. We need to respect each other's views. However, we need to encourage them to not let life pass them by. Some tools that will assist us in making sure that life doesn't pass our, us by or our friends are the four C's, which include critical thinking, communication, collaboration, and creativity. If you are equipped with these skills, along with the basic requirements and experience and expertise from your profession, you are paving the road to your success and to your colleagues' success. Challenges will come and go in all professions, in all walks of life, for individuals and groups of people all over the world. The big question is, what key skills do we think that we need in order to face each of these challenges? Well, I think Maya Angelou summed it up quite nicely when she wrote, I've learned that people will forget what you said People will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. Now, we could sit here and create a mile-long list of key characteristics that we feel that we need to prepare ourselves for the future. However, think back to that one person who inspired you, like my Mrs. Johnson. I'm sure that person demonstrated a vast array of of the skills I've listed sporadically on this slide. Proud to say, I'm living my dream. I hope I did Mrs. Johnson proud. She will never know the full extent in which she had in shaping my life. She did an amazing job and touched me 
from the heart. Over the past 20 years, I hope I paid it forward. I hope that I have inspired or motivated at least one person who has crossed my path. I hope one day someone will say, when I grow up, I want to be like Miss Sandy. So I pose the question to you. What do you want to be? Or better yet, who do you want to be like when you grow up? Thanks for having me today. I encourage you to let your passion drive you to lead by example. Thank you.